The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended the coalition of results of Adamawa governorship supplementary elections after the resident electoral commissioner, Baris Dahuru Yunusa, declared Senator Aisha Dahiru Binani of the All Progressive Congress APC winner of the poll. The wreck on Sunday morning without a figure declared Binani the winner of the supplementary elections. Now, in a statement on Sunday morning by INEC National Commissioner on Information and Voter Education, Barista Festus Okoye, he declared that the action of the REC was null and void and of no effect. Well, joining us to discuss all that has transpired in Adamo Estate is Paul James. He's the head of elections, Yaga Africa. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Evening. All right, great, Paul. Um, I, I understand that you monitored this elections in Adamo Estate. It's incredible that um, the Adamawa elections have dragged on. It's almost a month and we're still here and we're yet to get, um, you know, um, the results, the accurate results of that particular election. But let me just take you back to uh, the elections in February, um, sorry, in March. Um, we, we heard that Benani had been given a contract um, in the, by, by the, the commission to print ballot papers. A lot of people kicked against this, that th there was already vested interest. We also heard that, uh, I mean, there were people who were also rejoicing that she might just emerge, emerge as the first, you know, governor, um, a female governor in that area. But then the circumstances that have surrounded this election have so many question marks, and that's why we have you here to talk to us. What has been the situation that had led to what happened yesterday, even the lynching of the wreck? So, do you want me to speak to the supplementary election? Yes, or I should yes, go back to the yes, yes, election? yes, please. Can you hear me? Well, it's, I can hear you. For the supplementary election that happened on Saturday, uh, the 15th of April, we deployed observers to all of the 69 local government and polling units where INEC had conducted the polls. Now, what we saw on that day was an attempt by INEC to uh, try to uh, remedy the wrongs that it has done in the past election, especially in the way and manner it engaged the process. Uh, the only thing that was concerning about the process was the late commencement of polls. Across several polling units that we visited, by 9.13 in the morning, INEC officials had not arrived. In fact, only 48% of polling units had INEC officials by 9.30. By 12.30, there were still some polling units that had not commenced accreditation and voting. But then for those polling units that had opened up, the moment INEC came and started the process, to a large extent, we saw the uh, uh, attempt on the part of the commission to be able to give the people of Adamawa State the chance to engage the process. The other elements of the process worked very well. The beavers, for instance, were deployed in every polling unit. The beavers functioned. There was no report of any uh, beavers malfunctioning or any, any beavers that were replaced. At the end of the election, all of the results of these 69 polling units were also submitted on the INEC online results being important. What is also interesting is that for every of these polling units that we visited, we saw at least one of the party agents of the two major parties, the APC and the PDP. And then in all of the polling units, these party agents signed the results form and they collected a copy of the results form. Now, where the issue started was during the results collation. I got a call on the evening of Saturday from our coordinator in Adama that uh, drew my attention to the fact that they had moved the collation center to a location called du Dujeri in mm. Yola town mm. for security concerns. Okay. But then an INEC, of, an INEC commissioner returned and asked them to go back to the original location where INEC had designated for the collation. By the time they returned to that location, it was already time for the Muslim brothers to break their fast. And so they asked that they go back and reconvene at 9 p.m. They returned at 9 p.m. and were only able to collect for, for 10, uh, 10 local governments. A decision was reached that they should continue on Sunday at 11 in the morning to allow also the Christians to go to church and all of that. Mm -hmm. I got a call also in the morning of Sunday to say something is really fishy in Adamawa that the record was just about to make a declaration. 
So I asked the coordinator to quickly go and see what was happening. So our coordinator saw through everything that happened. The rest simply just came in cahoot with either the commissioner of police or a high-ranking officer of the police, came to the hall and decided to make that declaration. According to him, by the power vested on him as the rest of the electoral commissioner, he made the declaration and declared that the APC had won the election. As swiftly as if it was pre-planned, we saw immediately that, I, uh, uh, that the APC, uh, uh, the APC candidate for Adama also uh, addressed the press to also, uh, I mean, uh, shared her own acceptance speech for the nom the uh, the I mean the nomination as the governor of the state. Mm. So for us at Yaga, we were appalled by what happened, and then immediately. We call that INEC should nullify the process, one. Two, arrest and prosecute everyone that is involved with that because we thought it is an illegal act. According to Section 64, Section 65 of the Electoral Act, only a returning officer that is appointed by INEC can make a return from an election. So we thought that for the REC to be doing that, the REC is overstepping its own bounds. It is an illegality and that we, should, that we shouldn't even be allowed to stand. In fact, we thought it was not just suspending the REC, but then that the, uh, the REC should have been arrested and be prosecuted for constituting that uh, uh, problem in Adamawa State. Interesting. We saw videos, some of them very disturbing, um, of, you know, uh, the protest and the outcry from the people of Adamawa State. And um, interestingly, at, at least Einek has come out to say that this elections um, or his actions were null and void. And as we speak, um, we hear that he has been fired. Uh, we're yet to authenticate that from Einek, but we hear that he's been fired. Um, what kind of response or what kind of reaction do you think that this will, one way or the other, envisage, knowing that We've seen several questionable wrecks. I mean, we saw what happened in River State. Um, there are several places in Emo State also that never um, saw election materials, neither did they see election officials, but their results were uploaded um, by some form of magic to the IREV. Um, and, and with what INEC has done today, will it one way or the other salvage the face of the Electoral Commission in the just concluded elections? So, Mary, I think what we saw happen uh, from yesterday through today is INEX attempt to, re uh, to redeem itself, especially INEX trying to assert, I mean, INEX at the center here trying to assert its own position as the true electoral umpire that is trying to do what it, we think is right in the eye of the law. But then you begin to also worry about INEX inconsistencies. If INEX can do this for Adam Mawa, why wouldn't INEC have done similar for other questionable uh, outcomes from other states? Now, the biggest uh, problem for me here is the so much discretionary powers that some of these INEC electoral world, in, especially in their own states. And this also goes back to the concerns around who appoints them. This is a conversation that we could have later, but I think in terms of reform, we need to begin to look at who does this appointment because I think to some extent, the hands of the INEC Center is even tied. The much they can do is to deploy. The president appoints the president electoral, or nominate national electoral commissioners, and then they are confirmed by the Senate. Now, before this election, we are actually raised concerns. We came up with what we call an election manipulation risk index, and we flagged some states that we thought are possible places where election could be manipulated. We came up with three iteration reports. When I say we, I mean at Yaga Africa. Yeah. And for all of this report that we had released, Adema has been flagged as one of the states that are potential risks of election manipulation because of the history of elections uh, manipulation that we have seen in the state and some of the indicators that we have seen building up to the election. If you recall before the election, INEC had to even move the ICT director from Adamawa to the center. There were calls also before the election that INEC should move the rest of the electoral commissioner, but for us, and they did not act when Nigerians expected them to act until now. But the signs were visible before now that, of course, the INEC work was partisan and was not willing to do what was expected of him to do.
Mm. I, I just want to take you on a bit on this reforms issue. It, it, it makes me um, um, go back to the process, the vetting process. And you also, obviously, as Ayaga, you must have seen the push and shove and the dragging when, when some of these people were recommended um, yeah. as commissioners. We saw um, the fight against one of Mr. President's aides who was also being you know, submitted at, alongside some of these um, wrecks. And a few of them also still had red flags, but they, these men and women got a nod from the National Assembly. So again, um, when you talk about the vetting process or who appoints them, if it all go, boils down to the National Assembly. And just a few minutes ago, we talked about, you know, the, demo, the democratic, you know, setting in the, on the floor of the National Assembly and the questions uh, as to, you know, vote buying and financial inducements. Who's to say that that's also not, you know, the situation when it comes to um, appointing these men? And I'm not in any way saying that um, we do not have responsible men and women who are resident electoral commissioners, but how many of these people come through the right, you know, the right um, route? So Mary, the question here is, or the challenge here is that this is a constitutional problem. The, constitutional, the Constitution recognizes that only the president can make such appointments and then the Senate confirms it. And then when you think about political interests, of course, the president is a party also in all of this. Mm -hmm. And then for the party in government, they will always want to do something that also tends to support or align with whatever interests they have in the election. So that is the first concern. Now, in 2007, uh, if you recall, after the elections, the president-elect then, uh, the late Yeradua, questioned the process that also brought him into power and recommended or set up the Justice Waste Committee. Mm. Justice Waste Committee, one of the recommendations it made is to set up a judicial uh, panel that is going to be responsible or charged with appointing INEC resident electoral commissioners and INEC chair. But then the challenge is... Uh, sadly, who do you even trust now in the judicial system with all of this and that is happening? Mm. I would rather with the current situation that we have in Nigeria to say we have an independent committee, independent in the sense that brought together like minds, say from the academia, CSO, media, and all of that, that will make recommendation to the president, and then the president will then review the recommendation and then submit to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. But this will also have to go through a, a, a constitutional alteration. The point I'm making here is when these people will make, uh, the committee will make this appointment or, or, or recommendation, they will subject this to public scrutiny. Let the public decide, maybe come up with two or three names, let the public decide amongst these names, send the name to the president for vetting, and therefore the president to the National Assembly. When we begin to institute these checks and balances, maybe it will help to uh, reduce some of these discretions. Now, the other concern, perhaps you will have seen, we questioned the timing of the appointment the last time. These appointments were done barely five months of the election, sometimes in August of 2022 or July of 2022. And these are some persons that don't even have experience in managing election. These are some persons that did not have the chance to understand how elections are conducted in other crimes. You just throw them into the rig like that. For some of these were persons with questionable character. For instance, the CSO community raised concerns about the appointment of the INRF from Sokoto State, who had contested in the elections in 2015 under the APC. Mm -hmm. We had raised concern about the appointment of the REC for Abia State that also has questionable character. The Senate didn't listen to the CSOs, of course. By the time some of these appointments were confirmed and the red for so from Sokoto State was uh, deployed to the Gawa State, we saw how people reacted. People actually protested that deployment. Mm. So that's in a sense, is even enough to dampen our citizens' confidence in the process. We saw what Anna tried to do to redeem himself before the election. He suspended the reg for Sokoto State and asked the reg not to participate in the election. He suspended the reg in, uh, in uh, Abia State as well. So we thought Anna could have looked through uh, what they have across the state and what may have happened also from the first round of election mm -hmm. and ensure they do the same across the state so that the people that will manage the process are people, for instance, that INEC will uh, definitely, that uh, INEC can hold accountable, that are... Uh, 
Oh, Paul, I think that we lost uh, that connection with you, but if you can hear me, I, I just want to just walk back a little bit um, to something that you said, the, f the points that you made, that if we follow these points, if we follow these policy directions, that we probably will um, get it right in terms of our electoral process. But then um, you made mention clearly of the fact that there are interests um, political interest, party interest, when it comes to picking these men and women who will be working in the so-called Independent National Electoral Commission, which is supposedly independent. But then, um, if the president, as you said, um, needs to constitute an independent team that will make recommendations to him, who's to say that these independent people will still not have, uh, will not be people that, you know, Mr. President picked out of vested interest? How can we be certain that these people will not be people that are either affiliated um, or have interests the same as members of the president's political party? Again, when we talk about um, National Assembly members pushing back on some of these people, um, again, I, al I always wonder, um, is it possible for these politicians to cut off their nose in spite of their faces? Uh, how possible is that? Paul, can you hear me? Can you hear you, Mary? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead, please. So, like I said, it's always about political interest. And it is time to begin to put the interests of Nigeria first. And I will tell you, if you want to put this election that has just happened side by side with the 27 election, you will see a lot of uh, similarities with the way manner the elections are conducted. And we should stop lying to ourselves as Nigerians. We cannot be doing the same thing and be expecting different results. Confidence but is it, But is it, in the, is it in the hands of the average Nigerian to make this call? Because, you see, the average person will say, well, they told me to get my PPC, they told me to come out and vote and protect my vote. And, and some, some of them will say my vote didn't count. So is it within their reach? Is it their power, within their power? In fact, my last question is, uh, what's the possibility that we will ever have a free or independent electoral body in this country going forward? I think we are getting there, but the first thing that I think needs to happen is perhaps a complete overhaul of the present INEC that we have. I had mentioned what I thought has been the problem is that we don't know how to put round boss, maybe in a, 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 a square boss. I mean, we put square boss in round holes and all of that. So you have to go back to the appointment to begin to see what sort of people are even uh, nominated into certain offices in INEC. If you go back and reflect throughout this election cycle that happened, I am sure you can uh, point fingers to certain names that featured prominently in the election cycle. And you begin to ask yourself, we have 12 national commissioners. We got 36 or 37 resident electoral commissioners. What are they doing that people don't get to see or hear much about them? I mean, we need to cut up some of these redundancies sometimes and also professionalize the engagement of these INEC resident electoral commissioners. INEC spends so much about training and all of that, but at the end, you don't see any, any impact. This has been one of the most expensive elections. As citizens, maybe we need to begin to ask questions sometimes what is truly the kind of democracy that we want to practice. There are certain elements of this election that worked well that we shouldn't throw away. For instance, to a large extent, that technology worked. It was the human element that disrupted the process. Can we start dealing with those human elements? Okay. Because, for instance, INEC has shown that determination in the, just this recent election that these things could actually work. Okay. So let us we deal with the human issues, perhaps. Um, our elections will be better for it. Well, thank you so much. And I, I'm hoping that those who need to hear this, hear this. And of course, that Nigerians, we don't detach ourselves. Because I guess that as a result of this, uh, this election, uh, there's been a lot of detachment uh, for you know, the voters. But Paul James is the um, head of elections, Yaga Africa. Always a pleasure to have you here, Paul. Thank you, Mary. All the best. All right. Thank you very much. And that's the show tonight. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a good evening. Tomorrow, we'll be back talking for development. Bye-bye.